India 2008 in from Lucknow. Let me introduce a cardiologist at par excellence, Gogatcher, and it's a great pleasure to introduce none another, Dr. Rishi Sethi. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So, what are the various options for the management of acute myocardial infarction? So, let's first understand what actually is ST elevation MI or myocardial infarction. So heart is a muscle, is a very hard working muscle, most hard working muscle of our body, which pumps blood and supplies blood to most of the organs of the body. But being a muscle, it requires a blood supply of its own. So heart has got coronary arteries that supplies blood to heart muscle to make it function effectively. Whenever that coronary artery gets blocked 100% acutely, suddenly, by thrombus, then it leads to infarction or death of that region of heart muscle which is being supplied by that artery. And that thrombus can happen because of many reasons, but let's not discuss that. But whenever it happens, it produces something which is called as the ST elevation myocardial infarction. So if you do not open up that heart artery fast enough, that heart muscle is going to die. So within 6 to 12 to 24 hours, most of the muscles being supplied by that coronary artery would be dead. So the entire impetus of coronary artery acute myocardial infarction program is to open up that heart artery as fast as possible. You can essentially open it up by two methods, by medicines, which is called as thrombolytic therapy, and by angioplasty, which is called as primary angioplasty. The point is that even with the best of thrombolytic therapy, the success of opening up that artery is anything between 50 to 70 to 80 percent. While as the success rate of primary angioplasty are nearly 100 percent, 90 percent plus nearly 100 percent. So globally, worldwide in developed countries, primary angioplasty is a standard of care. However, for it to happen, you need to have angioplasty centers, all across your country, all across the regions, and any person who has heart attack should be able to reach those centers within, let's say, one hour to six hours from his chest pain, which is not possible in most of the developed countries because of geographic constraints, financial constraints, and resource limitations. So there's something that we discussed that you asked, pharmacoinvasive therapy, and that's been coming, is that whenever a patient reaches a place where primary angioplasty is not available, then you give that patient thrombolytic therapy. Now in 50% of the patients, you will be able to reach some sort of reef infusion. In the other 50 also, even if it doesn't completely open up the artery, it might start some blood flow in that coronary artery, a trickle of blood flow to prevent the complete infarction or death of the heart muscle. And then after thrombolysis, you shift the patient to a center, higher center, which can perform angiography and if possible, if the artery is still blocked, angioplasty within the next 24 hours. So pharmacoinvasive means combination of pharmacology and invasive therapy for management of myocardial infarction. You thrombolyze the patient first, establish some flow in the blood vessels, then shift the patient to a center where, prime, where angioplasty can be done. Essentially, you do an angiography, see if the heart artery is opened up, then you don't do anything. And if the thrombolysis has not been successful, the artery has not been opened up as yet, or partially opened up, then you open it up by angioplasty within 24 hours of uh, thrombolysis. So pharmacoinvasive therapy has been shown to be actually non-inferior to primary angioplasty in uh, some of the clinical trials. And given the geographical diversity and the problems of our country, I think we should have uh, all setups, thrombolytic setup, pharmacoinvasive setups, and setups for primary angioplasty. And pharmacoinvasive, even if the center is thrombolyzing a patient, you can thrombolyze and shift the patient within 24 hours, which essentially does not remain such a big emergency as opening up, as giving thrombolysis within one hour. So pharmacoinvasive therapy seems to be fitting the bill as far as our country care for STEMI is concerned. 